Hey everybody, Jason Moss here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Facebook group, okay? It's not very hard, but it is a little daunting if you don't know what you're doing, uh, so I will help you get everything set up and squared away. Before we do that though, uh, please consider subscribing, smash that like button, you are gonna like this, it's very, very simple. I do videos like this all the time. Also, the group that I'm gonna be creating and showing you is a YouTube creators group that has no spam whatsoever. If you're in any of those other YouTube uh, groups on Facebook, you know that they are just full of spam, just people uh, posting all of their channel links and their video links, and there's actually no conversations going on about how to make your channel better. Our group actually does that, so I will leave the uh, link in the description below. But let's jump in and create this Facebook group, okay? So all you do is you log into your Facebook. In the top right, you come over to this uh, little plus icon. You hit Create, and then you're going to be creating a group. So we come down here to Group. All right, now we're going to have a screen come up here that shows a preview window in the middle. It's very actually beautiful how they've done this. Um, they, they changed it a couple months back. But over here on the left-hand side, we're going to create the group name. So this right here, uh, this is my Facebook group, okay? You can see it kind of shows you how it's going to look, all right, uh, which is awesome. Choose privacy, okay? Now this is pretty important, all right? Uh, with the privacy, you have the options of public or private. Now, if you choose private, okay, you can never, ever, ever turn it back to public, okay? Because all those members that joined as private, they're under the impression that, they, that it's gonna be private and then you change it to public, that's not really fair to them. However, if you choose public, all right, you can turn it to private later. So those are options that you have to remember, all right? My groups are always private and this really depends on what your group is about, okay? But then you have the option of visible or you have hidden. I forget on public. Uh, public public is just public, so there, there's no options there. Uh, private, visible, or hidden. All my groups are visible. Now, that means when someone is searching for a group to join that they can actually find it. If it is hidden, all right, they can't even find it in the Facebook search. All right, so why would you use a hidden group? The hidden groups are usually for like, uh, like maybe a paid membership. Maybe you have a course or something or they're members to your product or service or whatever, and then you can add them to your hidden Facebook group where you don't want other people to find or even request to join. Um, so that's why you would use like a hidden one, okay? But I would do visible in this situation. Um, and then it does give you an option to invite friends right off the bat. You can do that. You can just uh, uh, click in there and start typing your friend's name and invite. And then you're going to hit create. Okay, once you create, your Facebook group is created. It's a, uh, it's a living entity on Facebook at that point, and then you have to make all the settings. So I'm not going to do that right this second, and I'm gonna hop over to the group that I've created. Okay, and here we go. This is our brand new, no spam YouTube creators group. So. If you are watching this video and you are interested in making YouTube videos, feel free to join this group. You can search for it, you can find it. There's also the link in the description below, all right? But this is this is how you do everything inside of it. And it, there are a lot of options, okay? You can see they give you a lot of different tools uh, with member requests, auto automatic member approvals. Uh, I mean, you can read through that. I'm gonna go through all of its settings. There's a lot of different things in here, okay? So let's just start at the top. All right, so once you come over to the member request, we'll click on that here, and it'll show all of the member requests that are still pending right here in the middle. And you'll see we have one uh, matching request right now because I just went through a bunch of the other ones. And you have simple options here of approve or decline. Now, if you have a group, this button here is actually gonna be blue and the reason mine is red is because I am running a Chrome extension uh, called Group Leads, which allows me to save all of this information um, that they're answering because they're answering three questions, which I'll get to that here in a second, okay? But 
the Facebook allows you to ask three questions and group leads allows me to capture all that data and save it into a spreadsheet. So I have a whole video on that. I'll put the link in the description below if you're interested in that. Um, but here you'll see all their information and you can see if they are real. Um, you can see all the answers that they uh, they put for the questions. So I ask uh, what their email address is to you know prevent spammers. Um, you know, what they're most interested in learning about the group and enter your YouTube channel link. So you can ask whatever you want. Those three questions are up to you and you only get three, so make them good. You can edit them later if you want, um, so that is up to you. You do also have options on, you know, filtering all this different stuff because a lot of groups will have thousands of requests. If you're running a, a very large group, um, it lets you filter out and look through all that different stuff. This over here, automatic member approvals, um, you can set up criteria for it, okay? So basically when someone, you know, if you have a group that has a lot of requests and you don't wanna manually go through all of those, okay? You can set up different criteria and automatically accept them based on certain things. So if, you know, they're friends with someone already in the group, you know, how long they've been on Facebook, um, if they completed all your membership questions, you know, there's lots of different options. Here's a local one. If you're running like a, a local type of business, um, that can be helpful. So you do have those options. With my extension uh, group leads, they actually give you more options than this as well for automatic approval. So that's another plus. Now, if we go down to membership questions, all right, membership questions, here are the three that I have. Um, like I said, you can always change these up. You can edit them, you can delete them, do whatever you want. Um, and they give you options of writing in text, you have multiple choice, um, you have check boxes, they, they have different options of questions that you wanna do. Um, and then you can also ask them to uh, agree to the group rules as well, which I actually should have that on, I forgot. So I'll put that on there, all right? So the next thing here is pending post. Okay, so in the pending post area, uh, which I don't have any in here, but you will see all of the pending posts from members if you have that option selected, okay? And we'll, we'll see that here in settings in a moment. Um, so you can turn on post approval. So people in your group can't just post whatever they want. They have to make a post and then you as the admin have to manually approve it, okay? Or one of your moderators. So all of those pending posts will show up in here. Now, if we go over to post topics, um, it kind of gives you some categorization of, you know, all the different posts. So you can kind of tag them, I guess you would say. Um, and I just made this one here, camera gear. I didn't have any in here yet, uh, but we can put like drones or something. If, uh, you know, people, if we had a bunch of drones post and people were searching for those, you can tag them all as drones and then people can search through those topics and find things uh, more easily. Okay, now if we go over to scheduled post, you will see all the future posts that you have scheduled out. All right, so you can make a post and just instantly publish it. Or what I always suggest with groups is, you know, batch work. Okay, make a bunch of scheduled posts, um, you know, sit down one day, make a bunch of scheduled posts for the next two or three weeks. So you don't have to get in there to the group every single day and make a new post. You can just uh, schedule them all out and they will push out automatically. So you have all the, the same options when scheduling a post. Uh, you probably know how to do that already. Um, and then this is where you will find them. So if you know something changed in the group and you didn't want to, you can reschedule it. Um, you can delete it. Um, you have all the options that you want, okay? Uh, moving on, let's go to activity log. And in the activity log, we can see everything that's been going on with the admins and the moderators of the group, okay? So as you can see, I'm the only admin. I don't have any moderators in here yet, um, but I can see that I approved um, John's request to join the group. Um, and then yesterday, uh, deleting post, all right, approving different things, request to join, um, edited some rules a couple days ago, all the different things. So if something disappears, like a post disappears, and maybe it wasn't you, 
and you're trying to figure something out, this is where you would go to see which one of your moderators did it or admins. Um, and then they give you different filter options over here. Um, so you can sort through some things, um, look through dates, um, a lot of good stuff in there, especially if you're managing a very, very large group. Okay. Now, if we move on to group rules, all right, in group rules, um, Facebook gives you the options of, you know, making group rules so people abide by certain things. Now, I don't think they give you enough characters in here, um, you know, to play with. This is maxed out right here. I wish they would give you more, um, more writing room in there. But as you can see, um, if you have a brand new group, they actually give you four different rules right off the bat that you can just uh, punch, just like accept, accept, accept. And it's just four automatic rules for you. Um, I think this one down here is like an automatic one that they wrote. And I kind of just use theirs and I kind of rewrite them a little bit. Um, so like our main rule that I have number one is uh, in this type of group, there's no asking for sub for sub, comment for comment, and you can't post your channel or your video links. We don't want this to be a cesspool of just, you know, people posting their their videos um, and just self-promotion. We want actual conversation going on, helping each other with different things, talking about camera gear and drones and, you know, lighting and all the different things that go with making a YouTube channel, okay? So you can really uh, narrow down things. And when people violate these rules, I'll show you here in a minute, but you can like remove post and you can, uh, you know, click on which rule they violated. All right. So they know exactly uh, why maybe their post was removed or something like that. Okay. Um, so moving on, let's go to member reported content. All right. And I don't have anything in here at the moment, of course. But if one of the members sees a post that violates a rule or something, or maybe someone's posting something just absolutely non-relevant in the group, okay, um, a member can go in there, they can flag it, they can say, uh, I think, I forget exactly what it says, but it says like, uh, you know, notify the admin, okay, and then those will be put in here and you'll get like a notification of it, um, and then you can review those different posts, okay. So moving on, let's go to moderation alerts. There's some good things in here that can be very helpful. Um, right now, I don't have any alerts set up. I just haven't gone through it yet. But if we click on edit alerts, um, we can actually do keywords. So if you want to be notified of uh, maybe a certain topic that people are talking about, or like my group, we don't allow talking about politics. All right. Um, so I could put in there something like, I don't know, Donald Trump or Joe Biden or something like that, Democrat, Republican as a keyword. So if, you know, someone's talking about politics or something like that, it'll trigger it. And I can review that real quick and make sure that, you know, things aren't getting crazy in the group. Right. Um, and then they also give you engagement alerts as well, um, which can be very helpful. All right. So moving on to group quality. All right. Group quality. Um, really you know i don't really do anything with it uh facebook kind of updates that for you um you know if you're breaking certain policies they'll put notifications in here like this um, i really don't have a whole lot of expertise with it or experience because we haven't had any flags or anything in any of the groups that i'm in okay now if we go down to settings down here okay settings is the big one okay settings is what you do initially once you get this group set up okay so just moving down the list you'll see there's a whole bunch of settings in here all right you have your name and description um so the name you have your you know that's just the name of the group and then the description okay is what they see when they are searching for a group so if they're searching for the group and they see you know the no spam youtube creators group right below it they're going to see like this first little line and maybe just a little bit of this all right and then once they click on it they'll see the entire description so this should be like your your teaser your your kind of like your elevator sales pitch to get people to request to join your group okay so that is the description section there um privacy that's like the same privacy when you created the group you have the options of changing that there um the visibility you have your location you have tags, which I actually need to do that um, now that I think of it. Um, web address. So you, they give you a nasty 
looking URL. When you have a brand new group, you can uh, uh, edit the web address, so the URL, and I edit it to what our name of the group is, okay? You have group colors, so it's just kind of like a theme color, um, you know, like the, the bars and the links and stuff. Um, so that's just, you know, personal preference there. Um, badges are for, you know, when people make posts and things, it lets people know who is the admin, who is a moderator. Those are very important to have. Um, and then you have these other ones, which are kind of fun. I mean, I always leave them on. You can do what you want with them. Group affiliation. Um, basically, you can you can tell you can make it so the group is affiliated with a certain person, or um, I think you can do it to a page as well. Um, I forget what options. Okay, maybe I only have the only option. So the group affiliation is with myself. You can do that. Um, turn that on or off. I don't know if it really matters or not. Okay. Um, oops. I'll just leave that off for now. All right. Extra features: the group type. You do have uh, you know different types of groups. They you know because you have buy and sell groups, gaming groups, social learning, jobs. This is really just a general group, or it could be like a social learning as well. Um, they do have the options of you can give people like um, kind of like courses in a way. So there's different things that they want to complete. Um, so that is the social learning because you have the um, the series of units, as they call it, that uh, people can go through. So that's kind of cool. Um, so they have different options in here. And then uh, rooms. I actually thought this rooms was off. Um, I don't allow rooms in my groups. Um, in room chat, I don't do that as well. I've never really even messed with that stuff, but I always have it off. Okay. Um, guides, I really don't know what that is for. Um, I guess I guess the guides is kind of going off that uh, you know the social learning units as well. So I'll have to look into that. My apologies for not knowing exactly what that is. I think that's brand new. Um, manage membership. So you have the options of who can join the group. Um, so you can allow profiles or pages. I'm only allowing profiles at this time. Who can approve the member request? So um, that actually should be right there. Admins and moderators. See, I'm, I'm going through this and I already forgot some of these different settings. Um, so you don't want other members to be able to allow other people in. I mean, some groups you might want that, um, but I don't because I want full control over who is in the group. So only admins and moderators can approve member requests, okay? And then who is pre-approved to join? Um, I do nobody. Um, so you can, if people are coming over from a certain group, um, you, you can kind of select that there, um, you know, so everybody's pre-approved, you know, and it gives you a little explanation there as well. All right, and you can also upload a file. So all the different email addresses, if they have that registered with Facebook. So that's kind of hit or miss because a lot of people use different email addresses, okay? Now, the advanced setting, linked pages. All right, so you can link like a certain page. As you can see, um, my pages are populating there. So you can, if you have a normal page and then you have a group attached to it, you can link them together so they associate together. Um, you know, that, that's really up to you. Sometimes it makes sense, sometimes it doesn't. Some all uh, outside plugins or extensions that you might use might require this, so that's where you come in and do that as well, okay? Uh, recommended groups, so you can actually recommend other groups from within your group if you want. Um, I don't do that, um, but you do have that option, okay? And then apps, so if you're using other extensions and um, different types of Facebook apps that have integrations built in, that's where you can go down and manage those, all right? So that is all for the settings area, and then we'll jump down to insights here with the growth engagement um, and other things. All right, so in the growth area, um, it gives you some nice graphs and, and details. You have different options on looking through things, seven days, 28, 60 days, or custom. Um, as you can see, we just started this group. We have 112 members at the moment. And uh, a key thing to always look at is the activity, the how many are active members. So we have 112 people in here, but we have 108 of them are active. 
meaning they're commenting, they're looking at posts, they are liking things, um, they're engaging, all right, which is awesome. Um, so it gives you stats on all of that, and then membership requests down there. If we jump over to engagement, um, it's a little bit more of the same, but it gives you different options on seeing posts, comments, reactions, all, so you can see uh, you know how things are looking. So more stuff like there, popular days, popular times, when your people are most active. You can see the top post, uh, which is kind of cool. So you can look through that and see what kind of posts are working the best for you, right? Um, and then you can make more content around that. Um, and it gives you, of course, you know, how many people actually saw it, you know, how many comments. Um, so a lot of good stuff in there, okay? Um, and then admins and moderators, all right? Um, obviously, this is only me at the moment, all right? But you would see all of your other moderators in there, and you, you can view their activity as well, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, you even have the download details function as well if you have like a very large group and you need to look at stuff, okay? Um, membership. Um, membership kind of shows you all of your people that are in the group and who are the top contributors. So this is a pretty cool thing when you, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're wanting to um, reward somebody in the group or, you know, make them a moderator um, based on how much activity they are doing. Um, you know, there's all different types of groups and this could be a very important thing. Um, so I'm thinking about giving out some prizes and gifts in this group, like uh, maybe like a Yeti microphone or something like that. Um, so this is one way that you could judge it and be like, yo, you know, you're very active in this group. I want to reward you, you know, and, and do something for them. So they give you options like that. Um, you even have uh, age and gender. I don't have enough data in here probably right now for them to pull that um, for the countries, cities. So you can see where all of your people are coming from, uh, which is awesome. And then down here, last but not least, you have the support education center. That's just, you know, Facebook support. All right. Another couple sections I wanted to show you real quick is just on the main page when you're inside of the group. All right. So you have the about uh, tab here, which this is that description that we talked about earlier. Okay. And you can kind of see some settings at a, uh, at a glance and make sure everything is correct. Okay. Um, you can make sure your, your rules are in there as well. And everybody in the group can see this also okay you have your discussion tab which is the main tab where all the posts and everything come up um, I went ahead and made this post here with some of the rules I kind of reiterated it made it look uh, a little bit better with emojis and whatnot and then I set it as an announcement so you click on those three dots and you can set as an announcement or remove it of course pin to the top um, so you have those options so this is sticky okay it always stays at the top there so when com someone comes in the group they see that first, okay? Um, and then the, here are those popular topics over there that showed up that we uh, played around with earlier, all right? The announcements, um, those are just based on if I set them as an announcement. Other people can't do that. It's only the admin or the moderator. Uh, members, right here, you can kind of go through and see all the different members as well, how many people are in the group, um, you know, find out different information about them, okay? Um, events, I believe I have a, I guess I don't have events turned off. I should go back in the settings and turn events off. Um, or maybe we'll, we'll leave it on. Maybe we will do an event. I don't know. Um, and then you have the media option, which just shows all the photos and the videos that have been posted into the group. So if you're thinking of a post that you saw, you know, and you remember what the picture was, you can kind of go back and just find it um, a lot easier uh, instead of just scrolling through a number of posts and you don't know what to search, okay? And then it gives you options on like creating an album or you can even just add photos and videos, um, lots of different things in there. So that is how you do that. Um, as far as creating the group as well, you do have your uh, main picture, okay? Um, which when you do that, you, you want to be careful with it because you want it to look good on desktop and mobile. More importantly, it's probably mobile uh, because most of your people are going to be on a mobile device inside of your group. Um, 
you as the admin might be on your desktop a lot. I know I am, but most of your members are probably going to be on a mobile device. So you want to play around with this picture. I use Canva. I'll leave a, a description in the. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below uh, for Canva, and it gives you a free trial and whatnot. But it gives you very good options on how to create these, um, and it gives it. You make it to the exact size. So you just go and say you want to create a new image, and it's a Facebook cover, and it makes it the perfect size for you. And then sometimes you do have to upload and. Look at desktop, look at it on mobile, make sure everything is positioned right, delete it, you know, edit it back on Canva, scrunch things down a little bit, um, and keep uploading until everything is perfect. Um, so that's how I do it. But hopefully I covered everything with how to make a Facebook group. Um, like I said, it's not terribly hard, but it is a little daunting when you see all these different settings. Facebook gives you a lot of control and a lot of different things that you can do with these groups um, makes it very very helpful and these groups are so powerful um, depending on what you are using them for all right so get out there make a facebook group have fun with it don't be afraid to mess up and guys if this video was helpful please smash that like button down below subscribe to the channel i have videos like this all the time where i show you how to uh, do stuff inside facebook uh, Facebook groups, Facebook ads, even like Google My Business. I have an SEO agency. I have a whole bunch of different videos um, showing you a lot of different things. Even like building websites with WordPress, WordPress hosting, a um, whole bunch of different things. Go through my videos, see what I do. Um, I think you will find something that you like. And uh, guys, I'll see you in the next video. If you have requests for future videos, drop them below as well. I am here to help you guys and serve you. Uh, but thanks for visiting, and I'll see you next time.